Francis, this is uh, Washington Post. Niger Hunta announces end to military relationship with the United States. Why do I care about Niger? Because we have a thousand troops there, give or take, um, and it's been our base for a long time for anti-terror operations in the region. Um, we have some other friendly relations with neighboring countries like Nigeria, but uh, the parts of Nigeria where there's Boko Haram and jihadis is very unstable. We can't just have troops there, whereas Niger provided a much safer um, environment as a base for us to do operations there. Um, and against, it's not just Nigeria, it's Cameroon, it's you know Mali, all that area, um, the sort of top half of Africa. There's a lot of um, you know, it's fertile ground for Al-Qaeda and ISIS and, and all these groups. So we had, you know, a significant relationship there. Um, it was very stable. You know, you didn't hear about Niger in the news very often. I think the last time before the coup this summer there uh, that I remember hearing sort of mainstream American news talking about Niger was when um, some troops died there under Obama. Um, conducting some sort of operation. I think it was against al-Shabaab, but uh, I don't remember specifically which jihadi group. Um, so it, it was relatively stable. It was one of these um, international situations that was not a problem. It was just fine. <laughs> and now under Biden, we have this coup that is anti-Western, um, and it's one of many coups. We had a coup in Burkina Faso. We had a coup in... Um, in the neighboring uh, countries, in, in two more, uh, I think in Mali, um, and, um, oh my God, I don't remember the third one, uh, but in Guinea, I think. Um, and so you have these coup, these like dominoes falling, where you have these military takeovers, and now Niger is ruled by the National Council for the Safeguard of the Fatherland, that's the official name of the, um, the coup, and um, they have decided they want nothing to do with the United States. Is there a reason uh, why? Is it something we did? Is it us or them? <laughs> Who, who's, why, why do they want nothing to do with us? Well, the biggest, uh, it's, it's France. It's mostly France. So um, France colonized um, a, a big chunk of Africa, as we all know. Niger was part of that. They're a French-speaking country. Um, and they have, for years, basically lost their tolerance of French colonialism under Macron. And so they see the West generally as an invading force. They don't want the influence of the West. So it, it's a lot France, but it's also us in that um, when the coup happened uh, last summer, they, uh, the Biden administration sent Victoria Nuland over, um, who was, you know, the big architect of we need to spend all our money in Ukraine um, before she retired. She went over there and she basically said, we, you know, we'll be friends with you guys, but you have to respect democracy and human rights and you have to keep our troops here and you can't be friends with Russia, you can't be friends with Iran. Um, basically lectured this coup, which is, you know, I, I don't remember, know if people remember the images last summer, but these were a bunch of guys with machine guns that just strolled onto the Nigerian equivalent of the Today Show and announced that there was a new government. And, you know, this diplomat came in and told them, you know, gave them a laundry list of things to do, and they basically said, go away. Um, and so last week we had another round of this where we sent diplomats over and we told them, well, you can't have diplomatic relations with this person and this person, and we're concerned. And, you know, for legitimate reasons, we don't want our troops in a country where the Iranian government can collect intelligence on our troops. Um, but certainly the, the way that the junta responded to this, their position is that our attitude is uh, berating and imperialistic, and they're just going to kick us out because they don't want to be lectured. Okay. Uh, Larry, I don't, know, I don't know if Larry Summers said this or he's quoting someone else, but Larry Summers, former Treasury Secretary, former President of Harvard, <clears throat> he said, somebody from a developing country said to me, what we get from China is an airport. What we get from the United States is a lecture. Is there truth to that slash? Is there a better way that, that maybe Trump or someone else would handle Niger for our own benefit? As you said, again, we have a thousand troops there. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, it's not that that's inaccurate, but there's a giant asterisk on that airport, right? Um, China is a colonialist <laughs> yeah. power. It will give you the airport, and then it will control the airport and claim that because it built the airport, it can enforce Chinese law on your soil, and also you're, you know, tremendously in debt. 
to the Chinese state now, so you have to go to the UN and support the Uyghur genocide, and you have no more foreign policy of your own. So it's not that you just... Oh, that's so great. So, so that's their, they lift that up as, hey, China gives us free stuff, and you guys tell us what to do. But meanwhile, it's China who is telling them what to do, <laughs> more so than even we ever have. Yes, and you know, when the United States lectures you about democracy and human rights, there's there's no follow up to that, right? Like Anthony Blinken shows up, says democracy is good, and then he leaves. You don't get the airport, <laughs> but you also don't get the um, blackmail and extortion like you do with China. Um, but a lot of for a lot of these countries that are tremendously impoverished, for a lot of these countries that have very corrupt leadership that need to sustain a very wealthy lifestyle while the rest of the country starves, China is a much better option. Um, I'm not 100% sure that that's exactly what the Nigerian junta is looking for. Um, I think they're much more interested in relations with Russia because Russia will send the Wagner group, the Wagner group will kill all the jihadis, and then the exchange is, you know, bad mouth for the United States at the UN, um, which is, it's a slightly better deal than the Chinese Belt and Road. Mm. Is, and this is okay if it's not, I want to know the truth, is is this a sign of Biden's weakness? Like we have plenty of examples of that where that is true. Is this a sign of Biden's weakness or is this just internal Niger anti-colonial stuff that we happen to have been now wrapped up in? Well, the internal Niger colonialism stuff has been going on for decades. So the, the variable that changed is our president. Um, I do think it's a Biden failure. Um, I think the, the way it's a Biden failure and a Blinken failure, the way the state department has, um, addressed other countries is extremely arrogant. We see that with Israel, right? The way that they're trying to ma- micromanage the war on Hamas. Um, that's how they treat every single country. And you can, <laughs> like, no one's going to like you if you just show up to a country, tell them everything they do wrong, try to change, you know, the way they do everything, and then just leave with no support. And that's not to say that some of these countries don't need to be told they're doing the wrong things. Obviously, we need to stand up for human rights abuses uh, or against human rights abuses. Obviously, we need to have a moral compass, but diplomacy is all about tone. Diplomacy is all about getting people to do what you want while they feel happy doing it. And the second half of that, Mm. the Biden administration is just a complete failure at. Interesting. Uh, We only got about three minutes. Uh, Latest with Haiti. Uh, you wrote the article that the prime minister, who has not been able to come back because the because barbecue took over the airport, uh, says he's announcing his plan to resign. Uh, what is next for Haiti? And I also read that the Biden administration is quietly not allowing these Haitians to come into America and they're sending them back. What, what have you been hearing? Well, um, right now what we are hearing is that on the ground in Haiti, barbecues gangs are having street battles with what's left of the national police. There have been attacks on power plants. So now the tactic by the gangs is to shut down power, shut down electricity, um, to try to weaken the government. Um, There is this plan. So, again, Blinken's plan here is to create a transitional presidential council that will choose a new prime minister and move forward. And it's in complete fantasy land. Um, I think they have six or seven people that they want on the council, but the general population rejects it because they see it as America telling everybody what to do. Um, and so you have, you know, it's starting to generate support for people like Guy Philippe, who's this politician who has a very good relationship with Barbecue. Barbecue has said he would like to see him be president. And so you're seeing these sort of anti-American criminal elements getting some popular support because Blinken waltzes in, tells everybody this is what you have to do, and it rubs everyone the wrong way. Um, and so, and it also, you know, you could appoint a transitional presidential council, but you don't have law enforcement. You have no police, basically. And you have no, you know, everyone in the elite that used to be part of the government, Barbecue said he's going to kill all of those people. They burned down the home of the national police chief. Um, so there's a very big disconnect between what the U.S. led coalition wants Haiti to do and what is actually possible on the ground. Do you anticipate a mass exodus of Haitians into America? Um, I, an attempt, yeah, but I, I think they're going to try to go to the Dominican Republic first. The Dominican Republic is already building a wall. They want nothing to do with this, um, and the U.S. is pressuring them to take in more Haitians. That's not going to happen. Um, so I think eventually, yes, and, and there's going to be a lot of those people that have a legitimate 
um, you know, political asylum claim. Um, and there's going to be a, a, a lot point. who don't. You're right. You're right. I've always said that these illegal immigrants that are coming across claiming asylum, not one of them will be granted asylum or would be granted asylum under the normal asylum laws. But these people might actually now, these Haitians that are fleeing. Yeah. They might be under. It's very yeah, hard that's, to that's, argue that Haiti is a place where people can feel safe from, uh, you know, from repression, especially if someone affiliated with barbecue becomes the leader of the government, then you have, you know, an official criminal regime um, and then that makes it, you know, it's, it's completely legitimate for someone yeah. to want to come here to uh, escape that. Yeah, because you could be murdered for your political opinion, which is one of the reasons that you could be granted asylum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right, that is uh, something. Uh, Francis Martel, world editor, no one's better. Francis, great to talk to you. Great to talk to you, too. Thanks for having me.